Looking ahead tonight, you and your kids can head over to the McCracken County Library and join in the Weather Authority Winter Reading Night. Yeah, all four members of the weather team are going to be there to read some of their favorite Christmas stories. That's where we find Weather Authority Kaylee Bowers live for us tonight. So Kaylee, what can we expect from tonight's reading? Jen, Todd, you still have time to come join the fun here at the McCracken County Library. The entire Weather Authority team will be here, including Zoe, the weather dog, and we will be see, reading some of our favorite holiday stories. Take a look right here. Not only will your kids get to hear some stories, but they can also have some hot chocolate and talk to the main guy himself, Santa Claus. And while you're here, don't forget to pick up a 2020 version of the Weather Authority calendar. Live in McCracken County, I'm Kaylee Bowers, WPSD, Local 6. All right, Kaylee, thank you. The Weather Authority winter reading is from 7 to 8 p.m. tonight at the McCracken County Library. WPSD, Local 6, the Weather Authority, certified most accurate by weather rate. Gray skies for the next few days, the first notable tonight. As I change the background there to the tower camera from the station here in Paducah, glorious sunset out there this evening. Got in many of your pictures. I'll be showing those coming up tonight at the 6 o'clock newscast. Next notable for you is maybe a few showers later tomorrow into early Saturday, but that is by no means the biggest point in the forecast. That is for Sunday and Monday. We have an extremely complicated forecast, and I'm going to do my best to break down all the scenarios for you and get you prepared and informed for what we have potentially coming for early next week. But for tonight, here is the weather map. An area of low pressure is slowly developing in the southeast United States. This is going to move up the east coast tomorrow into Saturday. And what that's going to do is spread more clouds back from the east to the west across our area tomorrow. So Friday ends up being mostly cloudy because of this storm but mainly dry. That changes for Saturday though. We're going to move the camera all the way up to the Pacific Northwest. Some showers, some sleet pellets, some snowflakes in the Seattle area now. This little low pressure system is going to really quickly zip on by through the area Saturday morning. That'll give us a chance for a few more rain showers. So here's the hour by hour view again. I think this model's underdoing the clouds. There's more clouds out there now than this already shows. But for the most part, it's a dry evening again, as I said. Now tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, temperatures near 40. It's overcast, maybe a sprinkle, but I would let, willing to bet that most of tomorrow is going to be dry. As that storm moves on by again, remember it's going to spread some clouds in from the east. Now early Saturday morning as that little system swings all the way down from up near Seattle, it'll give us maybe a few showers Saturday, the first half of the day, but they'll be light, they'll move on by. And by the second half of Saturday, if you have outdoor plans, things should be quiet but gray. Now, the big story is Sunday into Monday. There still is two tracks that look to be the uh, forecast scenarios for Sunday evening into Monday. Last night when we talked about this, they were further apart. But we've, we've gotten them a little bit closer, but there still is two very distinct and very different tracks uh, for this storm. So what we know for 100% confidence, a storm is going to form. It's going to form in northern Texas and track towards us. Where exactly it goes is going to have a world of difference as to what weather we get. Scenario number one takes the center of the storm. That's this yellow line right up the Ohio River. That would give us very little, if any, snow accumulation, some Waves of moderate to heavy rain, temperatures well into the 60s and new tonight. If this were to happen, we'd have a threat for severe weather on Monday, maybe some strong or severe thunderstorms. So this would be scenario number one. I'm leaning more towards that one. However, we cannot rule out the option that this storm stays well to the south. What that does is lock in some cold air from the north and we could have up to a few inches of snow, mainly along the north of the Ohio River period of some sleet or ice in West Kentucky. Eventually, this would still go all over to rain everywhere, but we could have a six to 12 hour period of some accumulating wintry weather Sunday night into early Monday. Regardless of what ends up happening with the track of the storm after Monday, especially into Tuesday and next Wednesday, check this out, Todd and Jen, it's gonna get cold. Maybe some of the coldest air we've had in some time. Air temperatures maybe in the teens, wind chills possibly below zero. That would be in the middle part of next week. That we actually know with more certainty than we know for the storm Sunday into Monday. We'll keep you up to date as things get closer, but I'm willing to say that by this time tomorrow, we should have a much better handle on which of those two scenarios it's going to be. Okay, Noah, thank yeah. you. New at 5, budget revisions and new student training programs are two topics on the agenda in tonight's Tennessee Board of 
uh, Tennessee meeting. Budgets were submitted by Tennessee's 13 community colleges and 27 colleges of applied technology back in May. New student training programs would teach a variety of topics, including nursing, computer information, and building construction. <laughs> A new treatment is available that can reduce the risk of infertility in breast cancer patients. That's next in Family Wellness. But first, a look at what we're working on for Local 6 at 6. Lyon County has seen some very high numbers this fiscal year when it comes to their jail housing costs. But an additional judge could change all of that. Their plan for bringing those numbers down. That's Story Plus, breaking news and weather at 6.